for slew he him, because his own works were evil, and his brothers righteous. Do you know that there are family members who will hate you because your deeds are good and theirs are evil? And evil communications corrupt good manners. There are some good children who uh, get around bad children, even in the family. And before you know it, they start acting like the bad children instead of holding on and holding out and being what they know deep down in their hearts, what they should be before the Lord. It happens in families. Verse 13, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. Don't be shocked if the world hates you and they don't want to have anything to do with you and they want to counsel you. It's all right. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. We're talking about having confidence in prayer. You can't have confidence in prayer if you are a child of the devil. And you're always thinking about devilish thoughts. And you're always angry. And you're always mad. And you're always bitter. And you're always resentful. And you're always trying to stab somebody in the back with a plastic knife and trying to hinder them from serving God. And you're envious of those who are serving God with it, and their works are pure, and yours are evil and filled with hypocrisy. Don't bow your head yet. It's not time to pray. We haven't even gotten started good. Just, just hang in there. But who shall have this world's good and see his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? You can't pray right. You can't have confidence in prayer if you don't love the brethren, if you won't help people and you have the power to help them. My little children, let us not love in word neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Let's be real about it. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Now we're getting to the confidence thing. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we Keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. God is still all about you doing things that are pleasing in his sight. From Genesis to Revelation, just read your Bible. God blesses those and favors those who are humble and do things that are pleasing in his sight. What are some of the things that people have done in the Bible that were pleasing in God's sight? praying to him do, putting things in place that would honor him such as the building of the temple and the tabernacle obeying his word no matter what other people are doing and what other people think Acknowledging him in all of 
your ways and in in this case their ways sacrificing to him in multiple ways and on and on these things please God from Genesis to Revelation there are things you can do that please God is watching you and there are things that please him and there are things that displease him And whatsoever we ask of him, because we keep and do those things that are pleasing in his sight, and this that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he, his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him, and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Holy Father God in heaven, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All of your word is deep. This is another passage that is deep, deeper than we can even go. But Holy Father God, with your help and by your grace, by the power of your Holy Spirit, we will try. And Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for the prayer meetings today. Thank you, Lord. This is our 426th Wednesday prayer meeting where we not only talk about prayer and preach on prayer in the Praying Through the Bible series, but, Lord, we sing about prayer, and we actually pray in two different prayer periods. And we've done that by your grace, 426 Wednesdays. And we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for putting that in our hearts and minds. And we hope that that has been pleasing in your sight. And, uh, Holy Father God, I pray now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you would continue to show us mercy, love, and grace. And please forgive us of all of our sins as we from our hearts, by your grace, forgive those who have sinned against us. Crush and crucify, Lord, our flesh and the old man within us all. And fill us all afresh and anew with the fullness and the power, the unction and the anointing, the fruit and the liberty of your Holy Spirit, not only to preach your Holy Word, but to hear it and to apply it to our lives and to obey it. And Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would cast out the devil and the demons of hell and the satanic demonic spirit of Judas betrayal and sabotage and foolishness. Lord, out of the hearts and minds uh, of the people here, cast out the satanic, demonic spirit of Jezebel, Judas, Sanballat, and Tobias, Demas. Lord, out of the hearts and minds and lives of the people here and the people out there listening, Lord, uh, I do pray that you would rebuke and bind our enemy, the devil, and his demons and his hosts, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for from the remainder of this time together, as we have prayed for every Wednesday service, now 426 times, and we give you the glory, praise, and honor for what you have done and for what you are doing. For the souls that have been saved, for the thousands upon thousands of folks who have been prayed over, and prayed for, and uh, the Christians that have been encouraged to pray. And now, Lord, we deal with the subject, how to have confidence in prayer. Lord, make it plain to us, and speak to our hearts, so that when we pray, we have a humble confidence that you hear our prayers and answer our prayers. 
In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Glorify your holy name. Lift up your holy son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Save those who are lost and revive those who are saved even in this service. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for sake. Amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, Dr. Neil Goddard said, God hears and answers prayer in accordance with his will. God wants us to get to know him, to spend time with him, to become more like him, if you will, so that our prayers will align with his good and perfect will for us and for the world, for others. And I don't know why we struggle so much with the idea that God is only interested in answering, hearing and answering our prayers that line up with his will. When Jesus taught us very well how to pray and what to pray, when he told us uh, in the model prayer, our Father which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy will, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's all about God. Never forget that. How could it possibly be just about us? It's all about God's will and what he wants done. And your faith in his will, understanding that his will, watch this. Because this is what God taught me through that prayer the Lord taught us. His will is best for us. Not your will, not my will be done. His will be done. See? And if you have faith in God and faith in Jesus Christ, you will, you will understand that his will is the best thing for you and for me. Not your will, not my will. In our last message in this series, we began looking at what John has to say about how Christians can have confidence in prayer to God. And uh, we were not quite finished uh, giving you the background and uh, uh, information for the passage, as I love to do. And so we're going to wrap that up, and then I'm going to say one thing, and then that'll be it for today. Dr. Walvoord and Dr. Zuck, editors of the Bible Knowledge Commentary, they continue, the writer had declared that a confident and effective prayer life is founded on nothing else but obedience to God's commands. I cannot emphasize to you enough, I preached on it earlier today, I pre I've preached on it over the past 40 years. God has never blessed disobedience. Read your Bible. Old Testament and New Testament. God has never blessed disobedience. He never has. He never will. And he does not, he does not bless it now. 
Every true blue Christian knows that and understands that. Every born-again child of God will tell a younger Christian to their face. Now, I'm, I, I want to help you with something. God does not play. He loves you, but he does not bless disobedience. He never has, he does not now, and he never will. And so if you want confidence in prayer, you need to hurry up and find out a way on how you're going to obey God and what he wants. Now, you, you, need to, you need to hurry up and get to that point because you can forget about having your prayers heard on high and, 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 and your little feeble prayers answered until you learn how to respect God and honor God by obeying God. That's the, listen, listen to me. The, 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 you know how you honor God and honor people who are in authority over you? It's not by just giving them gifts and that and this, that, and the other, doing what you want to do for them, throwing them parties and so forth. Obey them who have the rule over you. First and foremost, obey God. That's how you honor people. That's how you honor God. That's how you honor Jesus Christ. That's how you honor uh, a, a wife, honors her husband. I know you don't like it. But see, it all comes tumbling down to where we live at. That's how you honor God. That's how you respect, show respect to God. That's how you please God. That's how you honor Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. I know you don't like this, but this is what you need to hear. In the words of Bishop Daniel White Jr., my dad, who's in heaven now, is tight, but is right. That may not make you feel good, but it'll help you to do good so that eventually you can feel good. That's it. You want to please God, you obey him. You want to honor God, obey him. You want to honor Jesus Christ, obey him. All your little praises and all things with your dirty, fornicating, adultery, uh, homosexual hands thrown up to God on Sunday morning, that, don't, that does not mean anything to God. God is not honored until you obey him. Yes, the Holy, once you are born again, the Holy Spirit of God is willing to help you. But you have to make up this, this something that God puts in you that helps you to make up your mind to obey him. I can't get into the deep things of God on how that all works. All I know is there's something deep down on the inside, once you are born again, that will help you to will to do God's will and then help you to pray to God to help you to do it and God will come through and help you to do that which is pleasing in his sight for his glory, praise and honor. And not until you get there will you have confidence in prayer. Jesus Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Why call ye me Lord, Lord? Lord, we love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. And God has gotten sick of all of that. I'm telling you, Jesus has gotten sick of all that. And God shut down the church. All across the nation and all around the world, he shut it down. That, 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 was, that was not in your prophecy class, was it? He shut it down. And we got pastors who are mad. Mad at governors. Mad at presidents and i'm so happy that an author came out with what i've been telling people church shutdowns is not persecution stop lying obviously they're trying to save your life and the lives of thousands of others prominent just as i knew was going to happen prominent pastors and now even the president of the united states with all of this gung-ho talk all of this foolish talk, I know you don't like it, but it's true. They're all sick. Passed out in California. 
uh, Dr. John Hagee down in San Antonio. And see, this is something you don't even want to get, much less die from it. Uh, I forget the guy's name out in California. Over here. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Say it again. Uh, Greg Lowry. Greg Lowry. This is President Greg. Greg Lowry. He's sick with the coronavirus. And these men are too old to be sick with this. Because, see, now remember, like someone brought out today, this thing took out Herman Cain. And, it, and one doctor said, all this little happy talk and all of this gung-ho talk, a doctor said this this morning, he said, he's an emergency room doctor, he said, I'm going to tell you something, all that does not mean anything to this plague, this this coronavirus disease. It doesn't care who you think you are, it will take you out. It will clamp down on you and choke the life out of you. What people say is that this coronavirus thing will start clamping down on you in your breathing apparatus to the point that it'll make you not want to breathe. You understand? It's too painful to breathe. Some, somebody said it's like uh, when you try to breathe, it's like a million knives cutting you on the inside. God is not playing, people. God is not playing. He's sick of all of this, all these little fake church services. Sick of it to the point of vomiting you, spewing you up out of his mouth. That's what Jesus has done, whether you like it or not. And the church will never be the same as we know it, will never be the same from this point forward. Many have closed down already. When it's done, uh, um, uh, over half will be, will be closed down and shut down. Most of you are going to continue to worship God in spirit and in truth at home. Buildings will be sold for other purposes. And in this day and time, because God is only looking for those who are going to worship him in spirit and in truth anyhow. And some of you have had the best church services right there at home with the pastor there on the screen. As long as he's prayed up and on fire, he's not begging you all for money that you don't have. Come on now. Come on, Doc. Leave it alone. You can't, you can't squeeze that out of people who don't have anything, who, who just got an uh, eviction notice. No, all of the millions of dollars you got in the church in your house and in your cars and in your gold rings and uh, your crocodile shoes and, and, and red bottom shoes, all that all that needs to be sold. And, and the money needs to be given to the poor. You know who the poor are? The people in your own church. Every last dime. And not, not every last dime. You need to buy yourself a trailer. Buy yourself a little ranch house out in the woods. And get get out of that multi-million dollar uh, big, uh, big house on Pork Chop Hill. God is tired. He's, Jesus is, is he's sick of it. Uh, sick of it. Got homosexuals, married, so-called married, raising their praise the Lord. You know, you know, you can't praise me like that. You can't praise me like that. Pastors and pastors' wives swinging in the church, having sex with the deacons and the deaconesses and the, with their wives, and then trying to justify it by saying, see, this is keeping our marriage together by us allowing each other to have sex with other people. We have taken tr control over the adultery, so therefore it's not adultery. You're a lie. Your feet ain't made. 
and your heart pumps peanut butter. You're just wicked, evil, and you're greedy. And then if you can't get that going on now, you got a robot in the bed with you. A robot for the husband, a, ro- a, ro- a robot for the wife. You lie, your feet ain't made, and your heart pumps peanut butter. You're, you're committing an abomination on the level of homosexuality because you're now having sex with an inanimate object. Your little devilish idol. Don't bow your head yet. It's not time to pray. We're going to pray in a minute. Now those commands are summed up in a single command consisting of faith and love. And this is not the first time God has done this in his word. You know that. The phrase believe in the name of his son contains the epistle's first direct reference to faith. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Greek here contains no word for in, so the expression could be rendered, believe the name of his son. Believe. Believe. You want to pray with confidence? Believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's power in that name. There's no power in your name. Too many of us have have been bamboozled and have run amok by the devil thinking that we have some kind of power. I declare what? What, 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 what do you declare? Nothing. Shut up. I declare, I claim, I, I'm saying, go, and we've had, there have been thousands of little preachers out there talking about, I don't claim this coronavirus plague, uh, uh, pandemic. I, I decree it to be gone. All these little words, I don't know. They're misusing the words of the Bible. They they started saying this, but way back in March, the plague pandemic has not gone anywhere, and it's a monster that's growing more and more. Even Dr. Fauci said last night we may see anywhere from three thousand to four no three hundred thousand to four hundred thousand more people dead in just a few months. Others are modeling that we're going to see three to 4,000 people die a day starting in December. What happened to your decree, Sister Prophetess? Sister Prophetess? Uh, Brother Prophet, Prophet? What happened to your decree? What happened to your, uh, your, de- your declaration? It's nothing but foolishness. You, you have a false sense of of authority and power that comes straight from the devil in hell. And you've been bamboozling people with this foolishness on TBN and uh, Daystar for the past 20, 30 years. And God is sick of it. There there are many people who are not sick of it, but they're sick of it now because the prosperity gospel ain't working right now. Many of your church members are getting ready, have already lost their apartment and have already lost their house, and they're getting ready to lose uh, their car. And they can't get you on the phone. Hello. Hello, prosperity pastor. Your church members can't get you on the phone. And they need some food. And they feel like they should not have to go down to the food pantry. And you and, and, and you, you got a list of food pantries for them to go to. The food pantry ought to be at your church, and you ought to be out there preaching the gospel and lining up some of the saints to feed your people, and then a few other people in the in the neighborhood. I said I wasn't going to do this. I did. I, I, I don't feel like doing this today. In this context, ladies and gentlemen, it certainly includes the faith in Christ's name 
which true Christian prayer involves. You, you, you're not praying until you pray in the name of Jesus Christ. You can't pray without praying in the name of Jesus Christ. It is the all-powerful name. That's how you get your prayers answered. Not through your little declarations and your little announcements and pronouncements and all that mess you're talking about. That doesn't, that doesn't mean a hill of beans. Never has. Next week, this time, I declare and I decree that you're going to have a job paying, uh, let's see, let's see, you flip your eyes a little bit, uh, $200,000 a year. And that was 10 years ago. They, st- they, they haven't even made $200,000 in, in 10 years waiting on your little prophecy, laying your little dirty, fornicating, adulterous, swinging, homosexual hands on them. And now they are twofold more the child of hell than you are. And like I told you people before, and thank God, God has cut that out too. Don't let anybody put their hands on you, lay hands on you. You don't know what kind of demons and, and, and bad spirits and like the old saints used to say, uh, she has a she has a, 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 a lustful demon. She has a eating demon. Look at her; she's so fat. She has a a, a, a gossiping spirit. That was the old saint. The old saint. They had you tagged, buddy. Yeah, they they they. You walk in the door, they knew what you was about. Look at her; she has a vanity spirit. Look at her. They'd be the old mother be in the corner. That's what that was their job to judge you when when you walked in the church. <laughs> they had your number, Jack. And I don't don't tell me because I know. Because my dad was a pastor, my mother was a preacher as well, and we were in church. Uh, he was Baptist, he was Pentecost. We were in church all day. So when we got home, I heard it all. Yeah, you got to watch her. She got a she got an adulterous demon spirit. And you saw how she was looking around and everything and who she was going to attack and and so forth and so on. She better not come near my husband because I, I have to lay down my religion. That's what the old saints used to say. They, they, they were able to lay down their religion. We can't lay ours down. <laughs> what? What? That's what they said back in the day. I, I, mm, mm, mm. They, they, and they love Jesus now, love the church. But they, they'll tell you in a minute, now don't make me have to lay down my religion, lay down my wig, lay down my gloves and everything else. Cause I would do it. First, John 3.23 furnishes a kind of climax to the paragraph. As a Christian actively engages in deeds of love, Amen. And as he achieves boldness before God in prayer, confidence in prayer, by having faith in Jesus' name and doing good deeds, being obedient to God, pleasing God, doing what God commands, not not what some pastor commands or what somebody else commands, telling you to do contrary to the word of God. No, what God commands you to do. You know why some of you people are not happy? You weren't happy. You weren't happy before the plague. And now you're definitely not happy. You, you're not happy and you're miserable. You know why? Because you have never committed to obeying God. It's all, it's all up in the air with you, whatever, however you feel that day. I thank God for Joyce Myers. She's dealing with a subject right now, how to get rid of bad moves or something like that. Some of you women need to listen to that. You need to go and hear her. In fact, all you women listen to me, y'all need to listen to Joyce Myers before you come listen to me. Go talk to Joyce. Joyce is trying to help you to be happy every day, to be cheerful in the Lord every day. She's trying to teach you to enjoy everyday life. You women who are just controlled by devilish mood swings and and you 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 not the same from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday to Thursday to seven different personalities. Some of you and some of you men are the same way. Some of you metrosexual 
homosexual men, some of you weak back men, you just as bad as they are. Nobody, nobody knows how to take you. You change like the weather. Wishy-washy. God does not want you to be that way. And you can't be that way if you want to have confidence in your prayer life. All up and down. You need to be stable. Some of you folks are not stable. That's why you can't handle, excuse the bad English, you can't handle nothing. You can't take nothing. You can't even take a rebuke when you need rebuking. When you, you know what the Bible says, Jesus said, I rebuke and chasten those I love. I love, if I, you know, I love you. And so I rebuke and chasten you. You can't take it. You think somebody's always picking on you. If you don't get to praying and asking God to heal your heart and heal your mind, you're going to be one miserable puppy throughout the remainder of your life with no confidence in prayer, no faith in Jesus Christ and his name, no consistent life of obedience and helping others. How can you help others when it's always about you? Some of you people, you want to get married, male and female, because you're so needy. You're the wrong candidate. No, no, no. You need to be all about God and Jesus Christ feeling you to the point where you can give something and you can help somebody else. You must bring happiness and joy and peace and stability to the table, baby. You don't need somebody to fulfill you if you have Jesus. You want to join with somebody who's already fulfilled and you can do more for Jesus uh, teamed up together for the glory of God. I can see right now I'm not going to finish the little bit I was planning on doing today. As a Christian actively engages in deeds of love, and as he achieves boldness, yea, confidence before God in prayer, he is doing what God commands, that is, living a life of confidence in the name of Jesus Christ, which is undergirded by love and by obedience. Because if you love Jesus, you will obey him. And let me just tell you something to your face. And don't lie. Do you love Jesus? Oh, yeah, 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 you're a liar. Are you obeying him? Well, no, well, no you're, you're not, you don't love him. Stop lying. You don't love him. You throw his words behind your back. You don't love him. You're a liar. Your feet ain't made and your heart pumps peanut butter. You are a hypocrite. You're phony and you're fake. And that's what God has thrown up. He's, Jesus has spewed you out of his mouth. That's why the church is shut down and should be shut down. And like one man said today in a Christian magazine, church shutdowns, you cannot say they are persecution. You're making something up. The governors are doing, and the president, and I mean the governor and other uh, officials are doing what they are supposed to be doing, protecting the entire community. You need to shut your church down, Pastor, and you go there, and you stay there, and you preach your heart out every day. And let the folks know when you're going to be preaching. Let them know when you're going to be praying. Have devotions with your people in the morning. Preach on prayer at noontime. Have another time of devotion and evangelism in the evening. They'll come. Not everybody. All the time. They'll come, but they'll, they'll be coming at home where they should be 
because this is a light plague. I know you can't take it. It's, you still can't take it. But this is a light plague compared to the plagues that are coming. Plagues that, that, that seep on up into the house underneath the door and come and get you and choke the daylights out of you in the bed. You see, that plague has not come yet. This is a light plague. This is the kind of plague that Elisha told the woman who had the son that he healed and raised up uh, to go someplace to ride out this plague. So you can go someplace and ride out this plague. Go somewhere. Some of you just need to go home. No, you don't want to do that. You want to go out here and show yourself and, and, and try to make up something that's not there. The people are trying to, the governor and and, and, and city officials, they're trying to save your life. And better than that, they're trying to keep you from getting this plague in the first place. I would rather die than to get this thing. Just let me die. Because, see, I, 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 I don't want anything in me that's going to be choking me to death and making me not want to breathe, not want to take a breath. Are you kidding me? No, no, no. Let me, Lord Jesus, take me home. No. Because, see, and, and I'm a big old strong man. Yeah, I know. But I, I, Danny B can't take pain. I don't know. I told my wife, I told my family, I, I don't just, just whatever it is, give me something for the pain, I'll be cool. Because I'm not with the pain. I'm not with the pain. No, no, no. And this right here is very painful. They tell me that this plague, the coronavirus plague, will break you down. It'll make a grown man cry. It, it, you know, the kind, of, the kind of crying where the tears just roll out the eyes. It's so painful. The president could say what he wants, but he was in pain the other night. Trying to prove a point, walking up those stairs. He should have taken an elevator, and he could hardly catch a breath. You can say what you want. I, I, I'm not mad at the president. I'm not. I'm not one of these people who's mad at the president. I'm just telling you, he could. He was struggling to get a gas. He was gasping for air. That you know why? Because uh, with all the medication he has in him, that plague does not play. It hurts you when you breathe. Try to take a breath. The coronavirus plague says try to take a breath, and you try to take. You got a gas, and and it's painful. He was wincing. That's what they do when you have that plague. That's how uh, Herman Cain died. And so, ladies and gentlemen, let me just say a few more words, and then we're going to close. Uh, probably, uh, we're going to close before I finish. Let me put it that way. Since faith and love, thus conceived, go together. Amen. This kind of life is seen as obedience to a single command. A single command. It kind of goes back to uh, what we have not been doing in the church. And, and this is another thing that has displeased the Lord. See, the Lord has displeased people. I know you people don't understand that, but God and Jesus, they are both displeased they're not they're not happy with the church this plague is against the church pastors deacons deaconesses prophetesses prophets this this plague is against you it's against us why you remember do you remember the commandment the great commandment The Great Commission, how we ought to love God and love our neighbor as we love ourselves, how that we ought to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. All of that goes together. The reason why we don't go is because we don't love anymore. For the love of many has waxed cold. You know it's true. Just go ahead and nod your head. I know it's true. 
We don't love God as we should. We don't love Jesus Christ as we should. We don't love our neighbors. So therefore, we don't go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And God is not pleased with that. These are simple commands all tied together into one. If you will. Two new themes appear in verse 24. The first theme is the epistle's first reference to God or Christ abiding in each obedient believer. Each obedient believer. Those who obey his commands live or abide in him. And that's so true. See, you're not fellowshipping with God and Jesus if you're disobedient as the devil. Got you a side piece. Not just the men, women today. There are some wives just as whorish as their husbands are whorish and whoremongerish. Pastor's wives. I'm not, I'm not just talking about church members. I'm talking about pastor's wives and women in the ministry. They're Jezebels. And their husbands are Ahab, Ahabs. <clears throat> when, whenever your wife is so powerful, she can convince you to let her swing and you sit there and watch. You're Ahab and she's Jezebel. Don't bow your head. It's not time to pray. And, and, and by the way, I'm not talking about uh, just Jerry Falwell Jr. and his wife. I told you all, don't just focus on them. That's just the tip of the iceberg. This has been going on for years, people. And God is not pleased. Those who obey and he, those who obey his commands live or abide in him. And he in them. That the abiding life involves this mutuality is made plain in the parable of the vine and the branches. <clears throat> the second new idea is the epistle's first of six explicit references to the Holy Spirit. The way a believer can verify that God lives in him is by the operation of God's Holy Spirit in his life. And I was going further today. I was going to go deeper today, but I'm going to pause it right there to steal a word from Fred Price. My time is up for today okay uh, uh, I, I want to go further but uh, God is leading me to go ahead on and shut it down until next week if the Lord Taras is coming and we live and so ladies and gentlemen let's have a word of prayer and then let me preach the gospel to you Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for teaching us today how we can gain confidence in prayer. And that's a wonderful thing. And uh, it is akin to the boldness that you talked about when you invited us to come to your throne of grace. But Lord, it has been established for thousands of years through your holy word the lives of your people and the testimony of your people that we cannot have confidence in prayer or expect our prayers to be heard or answered if we regard iniquity in our hearts. And Lord, help this modern crop of so-called Christians and believers uh, to learn that with the quickness. Lord, thank you for this chastisement. Thank you for this rebuke. 
because I know that you rebuke us and chastise us because you love us. Break us down. Break us down to the dust. Break us, make us, and mold us to be what you would have us to be. Lord God in heaven, as I've been praying since the beginning of the plague, be thorough with us. Grind us down to humility and help us to be humble, for real, to pray, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways, and to humble ourselves, and to repent and get back to you, our first love, and to our first works. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, now if you're with us today, and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior, your first prayer needs to be what we call the sinner's prayer. That's right. But first, please understand with me that you are a sinner. You've got to accept that. Do you accept that? That you are a sinner, just as I am, just as the Pope is, just as the Dalai Lama is, just as Joel Osteen is. And that you have broken God's laws, we all have. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. <clears throat> we all have failed God, haven't we? We have come short of His holy standard. We have broken His Ten Commandments, haven't we? Such as lying dishonesty, deceit, stealing, purloining, stealing from our own parents, a quarter here, a quarter there, stealing candy, stealing people's food out of the refrigerator, all of that. You may not think that's uh, uh, a big deal, but it is in God's sight. Yes, even your little white lies, your little black lies, your little red lies, your little yellow lies, they're all big lies in God's sight. And the Bible says all liars will go to the lake of fire. Coveting people and things, lusting after people and things in your heart. God does not want you to do that because you will eventually try to get it. And that's a problem and has caused untold problems and pain down through the years. How about dishonoring and disobeying and disrespecting your parents? So many children's lives have been destroyed because they dishonored and disobeyed their parents. So many are dead today because of that. No long life. And how about dishonoring God by taking God's name in vain? Have you ever done that? That's just five of God's commandments. And the Bible says if you break just one, you have broke them all and you should go to hell. Second, accept the fact, dear friend, that there is a penalty for sin. The Holy Bible states in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. We all are headed towards death. That's why we age. We're headed towards death. You know why? Because of our sinful nature. <clears throat> because of our sinful choices. We all will die. The body goes to the grave. And death is no small matter, my dear friend. Because we were not made to die. That's why it's so tragic when somebody dies. Uh, yesterday, two great singers, and uh, guitarist and a great singer, died. They lived a long life, and they did a whole lot of fun things. Did some great things in their careers, but they're dead today. The problem is, the Bible says that we're all appointed to die. It's appointed unto man. Man wants to die. But after, the, after this, the judgment. 
the soul which will live forever either in heaven or hell if you have never believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and repented of your sins uh, will go to hell to spend eternity there. So thirdly I want you to understand that you need to accept the fact that you are on the road to hell right now. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than any prophet, any preacher, any evangelist, or any writer in the Bible. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than he did about heaven. Jesus Christ, when describing hell, said, It is a place of weeping and welling and gnashing of teeth. It is a place also of outer darkness. Other verses described hell, the darkness of hell, uh, the blackness of darkness, the mist of darkness. So hell is a very real place. Jesus Christ said also, hell is a place where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Do you want to go there? I hope not. And I hear somebody saying, well, I'm going, I'm going there with my buddies, and we're going to drink at the bar. There won't be any drinking, because there will not be a bar. You can't even get a wet finger in hell according to Mr. Davies, according to Jesus' story about Mr. Davies who went to hell and who is still in hell today. Jesus Christ said in Matthew ten twenty eight, in another sermon, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Hell is a very real place. Hell is bad news, but I have some good news for you. Don't go to hell. You don't have to. The good news is you don't have to go to hell. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't say believe in the church. I didn't say believe in the Pope. I didn't say believe in some pastor or some preacher. I didn't say you need to be in a church to get saved. I did not say you need to be a church member to get saved. I did not say you have to get baptized to get saved. I said believe in Jesus Christ because that's what he said. He preached the gospel first and best. It is his gospel. And he said it best in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loved you so much and God loves you so much he sent his only begotten son Jesus Christ he gave up his son to become the sacrificial lamb of God to take away the sin of the world including yours and mine for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever that word whosoever means anybody at any time red yellow black or white all are invited to believe in Jesus Christ for we're all precious in his sight no matter what kind of sin you've committed you can come to Jesus and believe on him for whosoever believeth the word believeth means to trust in to have faith in and if you believe in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ said you should not perish. You will not go to hell, but rather you'll go to heaven and have everlasting life <clears throat> and be with God in Jesus Christ forever and forever. That's a great deal, my dear friend. It's the best deal in the history 
of the world. Don't miss out on it because you love darkness rather than light, because you love your sin and your partying and your whoremongering and your whoredom and your drunkenness more than you love God and Jesus. Humble yourself down and repent and trust Christ as Savior today. And he will save you. Simply believe in your heart in Jesus Christ. Don't try to clean up your life. You say, well, Pastor, I want to clean my life up first before I come to him. God does not require that. And the truth is you're not going to do that. You'll be dead and in hell before you do that. Let Come to Jesus. Trust Jesus as Savior. Believe in Jesus Christ. And let him clean your life up. That's what happened to me. And he'll do it for you. So follow me in prayer, phrase by phrase, and mean it with your heart, believing in your heart in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. This is what I was talking about earlier, the sinner's prayer. A Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And I admit that I have broken those five commandments that was mentioned earlier. For Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon me. And please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for my sins, was buried, and rose on the third day by your might and power. Lord Jesus Christ, please, I invite you into my heart. Please come into my heart and into my spirit and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins and help me to turn from my evil lifestyle and help me from this point forward to follow you, Lord Jesus Christ, in the new life. For it is in your name, Lord Jesus, I do pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in your heart, if you just believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and you just prayed that prayer and meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, the Holy Bible, you are now saved from hell and you are on your way to heaven by the grace of God and by the mercy of God, not because you deserve it, not because of anything you have done, purely by God's mercy and grace. So welcome to the family of God, dear friend, the beloved, the beloved family. Congratulations on trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and believing on him. You have done the most important thing in life. For more information, to help you to grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my book titled What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. The book is a free download. You can get it immediately and start reading free of charge. And you'll never be charged for it. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me of any man enter in. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you. We love you. And may God bless you real good is my prayer. If the Lord tarries is coming and we live, we'll be back. Uh, I'll be back before you at 11 o'clock Eastern time, 10 o'clock. Central, 8 o'clock Pacific, or thereabouts. If we're a little bit late, just hang in there. If we're still living and Jesus has not come in the rapture, we'll be there. God bless you, dear friends. Until next time, let's all stand for our closing prayer.
<clears throat> Holy Father God, we give you the glory, praise and honor. Thank you for hearing and answering my prayers, and I, I trust the prayers of others. Thank you for speaking to our hearts in a rich way from your Holy Word by your Holy Spirit. Help us to take heed to the message so that we can pray, we all can pray with confidence and boldness. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. God bless you, dear friends. Until next time, make sure you pray without ceasing throughout the night. If you don't know what that's about yet, uh, here, let me put some training wheels on you. Pray at the top of every hour. Some of you need to stand and pray. Put a little beeper on your phone or on your watch or whatever to remind you to pray. A little chime, prayer chime. It's not legalistic. It's all about learning how to pray without ceasing.